the most technologically advanced drumheads on Earth. What does that mean exactly? It means power, control, and all the tools you need to reshape the future of percussion. Choose wisely. He said quitters never win, and winners never quit. I felt like quitting drums entirely when I was trying to get this set up. So if you've ever been sitting in your practice space and you're like, I can't figure out how to set the kit up so it's ergonomical, um, and you're just moving stands around and you can't get stuff where you want it to be and you feel like you have it and then you start playing and it's like, this feels terrible. That was me in 2006 in the barn at Grinder Farms where we started the band. And I remember working for like four or five hours on this. I was so frustrated. I couldn't get my crashes where I wanted them. The effect symbols were all kind of jumbled. <laughs> and I was like, what do I do? I, I'm so sick and tired of this. I feel like just giving up altogether. Like, I don't want to play drums anymore because I can't get my setup the way I want it to be. So I remember walking out of the barn. I walked into my parents' house and my dad was sitting in the living room. I said, dad, I, I'm done. I'm so pissed off right now. <laughs> I quit drumming and of course, he is a role model to me and really didn't have a whole lot of words, but what he said was impactful. He said, do not quit. He said, quitters never win and winners never quit. And I took some time for myself. I went back out and I went back to the kit and about 30 minutes later, I came up with this. So you're looking at like 14 plus, you're looking at 17 years later, I have this shelf system. Yeah. Crashes are up top, effect symbols are in the middle. My hat and ride are fairly low with my bells. And this is the setup that when I figured it out, I finally figured it out. I was like, thank you God, I, I can play this in a way that just makes sense for uh, my height and the length of my arms and the speed of my band. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm probably never gonna change this. And in fact, all these years later, it's still what I'm playing. It's the ride or die. Yeah. The ride and crash or die. Or die. Yeah. <laughs> so that's so interesting, right? Because you have such a technical thing going on in your band. There's a lot of dynamics. There's obviously the breakdowns and the drops and then a lot of just the technical proggy chops. Yeah. So do you feel like when you got to that comfort, because you had already recorded some awesome stuff before that. So you get to that point, you Thank get you. a roadblock. Mm -hmm. When you kind of get to this configuration, do you feel like your composition palette just like got blown wide open because now you're getting to get to things ergonomically that you couldn't reach before so it elevates your parts? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So when I write drum parts, I use this method called creation, memorization, application. And in the creation phase, you try to get rid of all the fluff and just bring it down to the keep it simple, stupid. Kick, snare, maybe hats. Then you memorize it create it, memorize it, and then you apply it. And it's that last phase when you're applying a sticking or a rudiment, that now you have access to all of these instruments that felt like they were three miles away. Like we can all relate to when you start playing drums, you're over here, yeah. kick, Mean snare, and hat. Yeah. And you're like, at least for me, I was like, how do I get over there? Mm -hmm. And then one day, and then one day you're like, all right, I'm over here. How do I get back to my hat? Yeah. It's kind of funny to think about now because, of course, you can fail or you can just move over, but it just felt like this huge move that was insurmountable. Yeah, especially at 300 BPM, <laughs> right? <laughs> AVR will never, <laughs> no, I quit if that's the case. So it just makes everything easier. Um, I remember years ago, someone said to me that your drum set shouldn't be something you fight, it should just be something you play. Yeah. And honestly, that's a challenge um, all these years later at times, but I try to keep that in my mind that just play along with the kit. Don't feel like you have to fight it. And the setup will give you an advantage. And I found this to be the most ergonomical where I have this shelf yeah. system. And I'm so glad you keep saying that word because it makes me sound less like a crazy person because I always point at the camera and I say ergonomics is the thing to feel like you got, you can't be fighting body tension and stuff because it's just going to blow the moment. Yeah, You're going to get frustrated and leave mm -hmm. the barn and tell your dad you quit. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, And I'm really glad you didn't quit because you guys just put out a new thing that is even heavier and crazier than stuff that you've put out before. And Thank I you. love it. Thank you. So let's talk about this configuration and why it feels so good. Mm -hmm. What? Let's start with the kit first. Run us around the toms and the sizes and, and the setup. Yeah. Before I get to that, I will say, um, don't 
Don't watch this or listen to this and think that I have it figured out just because I have the configuration. The first 10 days of this tour, if my drum tech was here, he's, he's somewhere. I had him move something almost every day. Okay. Because yeah. I just didn't feel in sync. And what happened was my, my seat was too close. My snare was too far left. Those two factors were just huge. And this is a game of inches. It, dude, it, I, ha I carry a yardstick with electrical tape that mm -hmm. is like to the quarter inch. And mm -hmm. like, if I'm not in there, I'm gonna have a bad, <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna have a bad gig. It's, so how, it's so weird to think about, but it's really a game yeah, of dude, inches. it's crazy. And I mean, we talk to different drummers and it's like, the rug is like taped out or like this is that, mm -hmm. or like they just know or they feel it. Um, how do you approach getting to that energy where you know it's right how, yeah. do you, how do you approach it what's your process uh you have to be honest with yourself okay like if yeah. if you're not playing well it could be you but it also could be something's just not where it needs to be and if you care about what you do which is what i told my tech i'm sorry spencer i keep coming to you and changing things the day i stop doing this is the day i should go home mm -hmm. because you just don't care anymore i i, I still care i want to play well and um, so if you have a high standard for yourself, you'll just autocorrect. And in my case, don't overthink <laughs> your setup, um, but also care about what you're playing yeah. and how you're playing and what you're, and how it's set up. And they'll sort of work together in unison. Okay, so it's like balancing being like an OCD, like everything, game of millimeters, and then kind of not beating yourself up for it. Yep, okay. do what you need to do and then turn it off and play drums. Yeah.